Oh, hey guys, if it isn't my favourite audience ever, this is day 18 of Top Dogtober. And if you're, if you're wondering what am I talking about, then where have you been? We've been releasing videos every single day of October and we're going to continue to do so until the end of October. At which point, one of us will be doing a forfeit, which I will remind you of now. Uh, either Dylan or myself, whoever gets the least sign-ups uh, using our discount code, which I'll talk about in a minute, uh, combined with the least views across our individual videos, will be taking part in a forfeit involving lots of hot sauce. Yeah, I'm hoping it's not me. Would I like to see Dylan do that? Absolutely. Do I want to see a grown man cry on, on, on video over some hot sauce? Absolutely, yes, I do. So, you know, stay tuned. This is the series for you, if you agree. Anyway, before I dive into today's video, let me just talk to you a little bit about our preparation, preparation resources that you can see on our website, which is filled with premium level lessons for English, maths, non-verbal reasoning, and verbal reasoning as well. Alongside each lesson, you can even download a homework task to help your child independently practice the topics that we've been teaching in those sessions. It even comes with a walkthrough of those questions within the independent task as well. Now, the best bit is you can purchase the whole 12 months, the one-off price with a 15% discount using my code, Vote Hayden. It will take 15% off that price for you straight away. And uh, yeah, we won't talk about the other code because you can use mine and help me win this little challenge. Last video, Dylan left you with a question, um, a spatial reasoning question. Very, very, very nasty question. He's been tackling some pretty pretty hard stuff, but I'm going to show you the answer to see if you got it right. Let us know in the comments if you did. There it is. So the answer was E. The best way to see that is just going from this cube to that cube. You can see the red line there represents the same edge, which means the X is our missing uh, side, our missing face rather. I, today, I'm going to be doing some non-verbal reasoning with you. Uh, one of my absolute favorites, uh, if not my favorite, type of nonverbal reasoning, very similar to a previous video I've done on vertical codes. Go and check it out back in one of the other days in Top Dogtober. I've already forgotten which day it was. I don't know. Go and find it. Um, but what we're going to do here is what, what we've got is we've given, been given three figures um, and then a target figure on the right that's missing a code. So each of the figures has a code that corresponds to it, FS, GT, and HT. And we've got to work out what these letters represent within the, within the figures. Now, nice easy strategy is we focus on the top letters and the bottom letters separately. So the top letters, if we look at them, we've got three different letters going across here, F, G, and H. That simply means there is a, there's something different, there is a feature that they represent that's different in all three. So we can think of some different things, thinking about scans back from one of our previous videos, we can think about shape. Well, I can see that these two have the same shape, so that can't be what it's representing, otherwise they'd have the same letter as well. It might be helpful in a minute when we get to the bottom letters. But sticking with the top for now, what else could it be? Well, perhaps something to do with the shading. I think F represents the top half being shaded. I think G represents a bit of the top half and a bit of the bottom half being shaded. And I think H represents the bottom half being shaded. So all of these shapes have got roughly half shaded, not quite exactly half, but they're all in different ways, okay? So our one matches the style of G. So we're gonna put G on the top here because of the way it's shaded in two bits. Now the bottom letters, I think we already discovered what they mean as we were going here. We've got S, T, and T. Because the T's have something in common, the only thing we can see that's the same about them are that the fact that they're both diamonds. So clearly the bottom letter represents the shape, the outside shape. Our one match it matches the kind of shield looking thing, which is represented by S, leaving us with an answer of G, S. And it really is as straightforward as that. Let's take a look at a slightly harder one. Perhaps this time before I dive in, you could have a go at isolating the top letters. I'd like you to start by looking at the similarities because of these R's right here, and then do the same with the bottom letter, see if you can get an answer. Okay, we're back. So looking at these R's, hopefully you notice that the only thing they have in common is this middle piece here. It goes a bit like that in the two R's. So R represents this middle piece. Um, having three lines like that. S must represent it having two little lines and Q must represent it being made of four lines. Ours is made of four lines so we can safely say it's a Q on top and this time we're gonna use some deduction as well because look, imagine we were running out of time and we had like five seconds left at this point. At least it's a 50-50 guess now rather than a 20, uh, one in five guess, okay? So onto the bottom letters, we've got L and an L. So we're looking for those similarities. There is something the same about them that's different to the M and different again to the N. I don't think it's the, the shape that's being made because they're completely different in, in all of them. 
Um, however, I do notice that the, the two L's are both made with double lines, okay? They're both made with double lines. M is made with um, like a really long dashed line, okay, like really wide, and N is represented by really little dashes like this. Ours is also has little dashes matching the N, which gives us the answer QN, eliminating QL, and D is our answer. So that is, a, that is it's straightforward, isn't it, guys? It's not too hard. I've got one more for you, and then you're gonna have a go at one at home. So here's another one, as hard as it gets, really. Pause the video, have a go. Okay, we're back in the room, let's have a look. So looking at the top letters, we've got two Xs. So there's something in common about them that's different to the W, and again, different again to the Y. Let's think about it. So all I can see so far that's similar, you can't say it's the black triangle, because they've all got a black triangle. It's certainly not the way it's pointing. Um, it's not the, the shading of the main part because this has vertical lines, this has horizontal lines. The only thing I can say that's in common is the square that's in the figure, because look, all four of them have a square somewhere. The square is shaded in black. So I think this top letter represents the shading of the square. X represents black, Y represents white, and W represents it being dotted, as is dotted. So I'm going to start with a W and I'm going to get rid of these first three answers. It's going to be WP or WN. Let's see. Onto the bottom letters, we have two Ns. What do these shapes have in common? Again, it's not the shading on the on the uh, main shape because that has vertical lines. This has horizontal lines. Uh, it's not the position of the square because the square's at the top and the square's at the bottom here. So there's a lot of things here that are just there and they're not represented by codes. That's what makes these questions harder, by the way. Tons of traps. However, the only thing they do have in common is, that, is the, uh, the way that the little triangle is pointing. If we imagine it as an arrow, the triangle's pointing that way. For P, the, out, the triangle's pointing down, and for Q, it's pointing left. So now we've deciphered what this bottom letter represents. We can go ahead and look at our one in which it's pointing down, which means it's represented by a P. So isn't that cool? There was nothing representing the shading, and there was nothing representing where the square was. That's when you know a question's difficult. So guys, you've got all the rules. Isolate the top letter, isolate the bottom letter. Use scans to help you think of different things. Um, as you go but this is your question tune in to the next uh, episode tomorrow with dylan and he will show you the answer and you can tell him if you got it right guys do me a favor leave a comment down below share this video like this video help us out we're putting all this work in for top dog tober we'd love it we'd love to see your feedback and comments and all that stuff helping us grow as well so i'll see you in the next video